Hello, welcome viewers of FCTV. This is Jeff Wyman here, Government Access Coordinator, Falmouth Community Television. We are in our Studio A at 310 Dillingham Avenue in Falmouth, Massachusetts, Cape Cod. And today we have a very special guest because this is Senate Spotlight once again, and it's Senator Sue Moran. Welcome, Sue, to our studio once again. Thanks, Jeff. Great to be here. Appreciate the spotlight. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day and busy week to uh, come visit us and, and talk to us about everything that's going up on in the, in the Senate and all the bills and everything that you're working on uh, for the residents of Falmouth. So remind everybody uh, what communities that you represent. Sure. So I represent four communities on each side of the Cape Cod Canal, many of which are ocean facing. So I have Falmouth, Sandwich, Bourne, Mashpee, added Mashpee this year, which is terrific. Uh, makes sense with the base and, and uh, those issues. And then on the other side of, of the canal, I have Plymouth, Kingston, Pembroke, and Plimpton. So some, some issues are um, similar, some issues are very different, but great communities, very lucky. Great, and how long have you been a senator? You recently, just this past uh, election cycle, won a re-election. Yep, um, this will be the start of my second full term, and I had a little bit more uh, before the first term where I came in on a special election. So I've run quite a bit, all uh, pretty much during COVID. And prior to being senator, you served for a number of years on the Falmouth Select Board. Exactly, uh, chaired for a number of years. I also was deputy speaker in the county government and uh, really did a lot of, uh, I chaired the Regional Economic Development um, Council for uh, the Cape Cod Commission, uh, lots of uh, Veterans uh, Council, all, all sorts of things, just to really inform me about uh, the issues in the community. It's um, it, it, you need to you need to be schooled in what's important, and you need the the background. So um, I had a good chance, good opportunities to get that all under my belt before I uh, went to the Senate. Excellent. And and part of being a senator, you you have to be a, a member of several committees, subcommittees. Mm -hmm. So talk to me a little bit about uh, some of that stuff that you're involved in. Sure, so the Senate president, um, as, as well as um, the House, um, made appointments just this earlier, um, within a week or so, and I am incredibly pleased to have been made chair of revenue. The Joint Committee on Revenue, um, probably handles more bills than any other committee. Uh, last year was over 500, and it deals with issues such as um, tax incentives, um, local option taxes, abatements. Uh, this year I'm particularly excited because uh, we're teed up to do some work on the estate tax issue, which is really important for folks in our community, um, regular folks who work hard every day, um, maybe have um, been passed on or acquired homes which have increased in value because of the economy, and they really want to be able to pass as much of that along to um, their next generation. And the state, by increasing exemptions and, and using other means to lower that estate tax, um, has been the topic of discussion, and uh, along with the Senate president and um, leadership in, in general. So I'm hoping to be able to see that move. That's really a, a pivotal issue, I think, um, for uh, really not only um, families on, on the Cape, but also to deal with issues um, that affect low and moderate income families. Um, when you look at um, how our uh, tax dollars are spent in general. It's a, it affects uh, so many issues. And as revenue chair, I'm also going to be sitting on the tax expenditure review committee. So that's going to review every single tax expenditure that the government offers uh, to anyone in business. So, for example, um, movie uh, film credits, um, those kinds of things. So it's, it has some esoteric aspects. So that's that's the committee that I'm chair of. And I'll be vice chair of consumer protection and public licensure, which I chaired last year. That's the joint committee that deals with licensing about everything except for medical. We did um, uh, lots of outdoor dining uh, last year, for example, lots of consumer protection 
issues from you know wheelchair fixing to um, dealing with right to repair, uh, those kinds of things. I'm also a member of the Joint Committee on Cannabis, on Financial Services, which deals with banking. So that'll intersect nicely with my revenue chair role. Um, and Transportation, which I've uh, now been a member of for um, all of last season and a little bit before that as well. And that's just really, I think, foundational for um, not only um, the state, but particularly uh, for Cape Cod, um, both sides of my district, um, really looking at, um, for example, RTA um, mobility, getting, getting people where they need to go, getting young people um, more attracted to public transportation. It's gonna help our climate um, as well as really keep the economy moving. And then I'm also a co-chair in the Regional Transit Authority um, Committee across uh, the Senate and the House. So the, the way that the committees fit together I think will give me some real opportunity uh, to have a strong voice for my constituents at the State House. I'm really excited about that. Great. It's a, a little bit of a nice segue into uh, we were talking about uh, environment or Department of Environmental Protection. Um, so leading into that topic a little bit, speaking about RTA, wh where is the Regional Transit Authority at statewide or even at Cape Cod kind of like moving into clean uh, at more, you know, getting away from the, the fossil fuel kind of consumption for, for buses and, and other modes of transportation? Well, there, there are some great climate effects in public transportation in general because the more cars we get off the road, the better. And we know that the, the transportation sector is one of the biggest contributors to carbon. Um, stats I've seen are as high as 60 percent in, in um, some places. But the, the issue that, um, that folks really look at in terms of uh, should we have electric buses, for example, we definitely should. It's a matter of the cost of pivoting towards that. We've got to completely overhaul the garage systems, for example, where the buses are fixed because they're different systems. We've got to provide municipalities with the um, ability and a plan to move their fleets toward electric. And we've got to really focus on increasing access to just even electric plug resources across our highways and communities. The, um, lots of times um, there isn't adequate access or they're not maintained and folks get to you know, a plug-in and it's actually not working. So if you have limited miles left on your car battery, then you have a quandary about, well, is there another one even close enough for me to get to? So all of the planning of electric vehicles um, right now has been uh, kind of on the burdensome side to consumers. We're looking at lifting that and also some uh, tax incentives, which will be coming along uh, those lines as well. Great. Um, also continuing on the in environmental protection uh, initiatives, uh, Falmouth has what do we say, 14 estuaries? Oh, yeah, um, really important to point that out because the proposed DEP regulations uh, that started with Governor Baker and that just had comment period um, and over uh, the last month or so brought out a great community conversation. Everyone that I've spoken with um, appreciates the value of clean water. It's foundational to our, our health, our lifestyle, our uh, tourism economy. And Falmouth has done a terrific job. Um, I've got a really um, credit of Virginia Valiella, um, former Rep Eric Turkington and, and others on the committee for organizing that in a way. And we're talking about Falmouth, but it, it affects every community. Sure. Falmouth just has the most estuaries and therefore um, a really exponentially higher cost going forward with this. And so um, when Governor Baker came in and, and proposed an expedited requirement on cleaning our water in, in estuaries, um, Falmouth was pretty far along with its plan versus some communities really hadn't started at all. Um, the cost of funding that was proposed by Governor Baker at 15, uh, rather 200 
million dollars, two hundred million dollars was going to be put into the effort for municipalities to um, to move forward with these clean water projects, but the budget got cut to fifteen. So my legislation proposes to put the $185 million back into the effort so that we can continue with the plan um, as proposed and as commented upon by local leaders. Uh, Cape and Island uh, Select Persons Association have made terrific comments that I based um, some of my legislation on as well as uh, the committee that former Rep Turkington is, is part of, and we talked to all of those sort of water experts and, and we put something together which suggests some common sense initiatives like subsidies in the form of um, principal forgiveness for upgraded septic systems, um, looking at having tougher requirements on new construction, which we think um, will expedite the future so that we don't have further contributions of nitrogen to our to our water systems, and it looks at additional funding um, for the Clean Water Trust. There, the, the focus is so that towns on Cape Cod, which have spent millions and millions of taxpayer dollars, will have those efforts counted rather than just scrapping everything and starting everyone from zero. That just didn't seem equitable to me. It's not about not wanting clean water. That, we've got to emphasize, everyone wants clean water. We're just trying to do it with equitable uh, considerations to give towns that have made efforts, you know, credit for those efforts, and also have uh, state funding some of these mandates. Um, we're looking at, on, for those, um, uh, for a, if you've achieved, for example, a 75% reduction in nitrogen level, you shouldn't be required to add additional watershed permits, which for Falmouth in the 14 is $250,000 each just for the permit, not including the work, not including the cost to um, homeowners, which now is about $30,000 um, each as an estimate. Um, we're also looking at where's the workforce coming to do all this. We, right now we know that we have a shortage in, in contractors to be able to do all these um, septic system um, you know, installations. So we, we've got to have some recognition on the timeline of that. And I met with um, uh, Lieutenant Governor uh, Kim Driscoll on this very issue last week and um, Moore Healy was right there. We were sort of chatting in the hallway and uh, the administration gets it. So I think there'll be continuing conversation moving forward because one of the primary objectives is housing and, and we know that the um, clean, keeping our water clean is foundational for our efforts for housing moving forward. Right. I mean, it's it's really interesting how these things are all kind of interconnected. You know, the housing and even the, the pandemic, you know, causing like stress on the workforce. And it, it really does all come down to like basic things like that humans need, like the clean water. And Falmouth has got so much coastline. It's huge, huge interest for us to, to keep this stuff clean and important. And, and it, it it goes all into this blue economy that we were talking about before uh, the show started, and it, it, it's affecting science uh, and, and the workforce, and, and people kind of pivoting towards more of that blue economy and in and, and, and the workforce. And it even it involves tourism as well, because we're a huge tourist community. And if we don't have the resources for, for folks to come and enjoy, then I mean, that just, it's, it just like, crumble all it, apart. Right, it affects our restaurants, affects right. our small businesses, and affects that, you know, that feeling you get when you cross the bridge and, and come to, um, you know, come to Cape Cod. And it's also super important on, on both sides of the canal. Um, so what we've done, um, my team and I have filed three really pivotal pieces of legislation that we first announced at the aquarium a uh, week ago. It was a terrific uh, event, and the aquarium has been, we know, a leader 
in the future of the ocean for a long time. And they have now committed to partner on the blue economy. And, and so, okay, what is the blue economy? Um, it's, it's really the idea um, that we need to foster investments in education and career development opportunities in marine technology. Um, so one of the bills, which is Senate uh, 1689 that I filed, um, establishes funding for high schools to introduce students to blue steam jobs, um, expanding the future workforce. Um, if we look at, for example, turbines or clean water. I, I was at Mass Maritime um, for the cadets coming home a couple of days ago, and, and it's one of the top rated schools in the country producing those uh, blue economy jobs. Um, it's going to incentivize nonprofits and academic businesses to um, look at the health of our oceans. It's going to help our fishing industries, our, our lobstering. It's going to fund um, small business to transition away from single-use plastics. Um, that's a, a key thing um, that uh, Falmouth has been uh, head of the curve in. And so we want other communities to, um, to use that responsible stewardship example moving forward, and we want to incentivize that. I also filed uh, Senate 1688, which is going to establish a blue economy um, workforce pipeline and really keep products and materials in circulation as long as possible so we're not further um, adding to the trash in the ocean. Uh, it's really scary when you see those commercials where they're just, you know, they're digging up huge amounts of pollution in the ocean. And then it's also such a big food source and we swim in the ocean. We want our, our next generation um, to have the, the healthy waters that we did growing up. And then um, the, the other uh, blue economy related bill that I filed is Senate 1700, which is an act to promote uh, natural carbon sequestration. And that fosters um, the utilization which um, Dr. Gladfelder comes to mind um, in uh, Betsy's work at the Kuna Meset, um, which for years just really restoring, um, restoring the bogs and, and it puts um, resources towards uh, restoring and using forests, salt marshes, um, estuaries, and seagrass beds, which naturally um, clean our air. So we're, we're going from ocean to air and um, supporting um, programs that really uh, make a better world for our next generation. Yeah, it's almost uh, humanity working a little bit more cooperatively with nature rather than us just using it for our own advantage. We're kind of like harmonizing a little bit with everything. So that's, that's right. That's fantastic. Uh, so this has been great, Sue. Uh, is there anything else that you have on, on your list that you want to talk about? Or? I'll, I'll come back with, um, we're going to be doing some uh, more um, work on Holtec um, and uh, making sure that, that the decommissioning is, is responsible. Um, that's something that we can talk about at our, um, our next meeting. Yeah, that's, that's going to be interesting. That's a complicated subject as well. So how do folks get a hold of you if they have any questions or if they uh, have any issues that you could help out with? Sure. Um, so my um, office, I've got uh, five staff. Um, you can get the contact from the State House, and I have someone that just works with constituent services, so can help with um, uh, questions or if there's something that you need, you're trying to navigate a, a complicated governmental system, that's what um, we can help you with. And I have an email, susan.moran at um, masenate.gov, I think it is. Right. It's, it's on the website. <laughs> I don't email myself. I know, I, I've got to learn you it. Don't. I say that every time. <laughs> <gasps> All right. Well, this is fantastic. Well, we'll we'll have you back in another couple of months, and we'll we'll be talking about some other issues that are going on in the Senate and all of your great committee work. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. And as always, uh, contact me or an FCTV if you have anything that you want to talk to the world about. We'll we're do. Always, we're always uh, accessible to you as you are to your constituents. Appreciate that. Great. Well, 
thank you, Sue, for taking the time to talk to everyone about these issues. And thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.